Wicked 2, Mad Alice of Texas, and the Bizarre Case of Room 525. Hello my friends and welcome to our channel. Today on Wicked Duel, we are introducing two stories in our new series titled Wicked 2. Each time we will highlight two strange and unusual tales. All true, or at least partly true. Today, both our stories are based in our hometown of Austin, Texas, where we run into the frantic specter of Mad Alice and question the odd tale of Room 525. So, without further ado, let's begin with our first story. Number 1. Room 525, The Driscoll Hotel. I first heard about the Driscoll Hotel while watching an episode on the Travel Channel. The story was about the mysterious circumstances surrounding Room 525. Completed in 1886, the Romanesque-style building was a brainchild of cattleman Jesse Driscoll. According to legend, Jesse Driscoll lost a beloved hotel that he once called the finest hotel south of St. Louis in a poker game to his brother-in-law, Jim Doc Day. Throughout the years, the Driscoll has fallen into many hands, and by 1969, it seemed that the hotel's fate was at the end of a wrecking ball. However, the hotel was saved at the final hour by the raising of $900,000 from a nonprofit organization. The hotel's beauty alone could be a selling factor to visit this site listed in the National Register of Historic Places. With its exquisite limestone elements, as well as the grand staircase, one is hit with the luxury and opulence of a bygone era. However, for lovers of intrigue, romance, and legend, one goes to the Driscoll for the alleged hauntings. The Suicide Brides There are several ghostly stories surrounding this landmark, but few that have stood the passage of time. One of the stories that first acquainted me with this hotel was the strange occurrences of room 525. It is the room locals call the Suicide Brides Suite. There are many variations to the story, but a version that seems to be the most prevalent starts around the 1920s. A young bride whose name was lost throughout time was found dead in a bridal suite's tub. Allegedly, the bride took her own life for reasons unknown. The, strange, the strength of this tale moves to the realm of the unexplained when 20 years later, another bride was found dead in the same room under similar circumstances. These stories, if true, are tragic. Researching, I could not find the origin of the story, just the threads of it passed through time. Not finding historical reference does not prove these suicides did not occur. Two mysterious deaths linked to one particular room, I'm assuming, would have been bad for business. Also, one has to consider the sensitive nature of the matter. Perhaps this was kept out of the public for the protection of the women's privacy as well as their loved ones. Guess I reported seeing a woman dressed in the style of a 1920s bride. The blurred image of a young woman slowly preparing herself for her big day. She is seated at the mirror or window of the bridal suite fixing her veil, eagerly anticipating her impending nuptials. Sometimes visitors have said that she continues preening as if stuck in an eternal loop, unaware of the onlooker frozen in disbelief. Some reluctantly mention eyes locking into theirs and a small smile stretched upon the porcelain skin of the long dead bride. Others report nothing more than feeling a cool breeze during a warm, still day or the sound of a leaky faucet emanating from the bathroom. But as the locals, and they'll say that all this is a sign of good luck, that the spirit of these women are helpful or are simply sending well wishes for the future happy couple. Perhaps that is the case. Maybe for these two lives cut short too quickly, 
and sort of a second chance for them to live vicariously, if only for a moment, in the halls of the Driscoll Hotel. I have walked the halls of the Driscoll so many times, and these bones still captivate me. There is a primal urge in me to unravel a mystery, to uncover a secret. I've yet to see any apparition myself. I have felt a breeze here and there, but my reasoning takes over as nothing more than a breeze. I will admit there's something about this space that leaves a question in the back of my mind. Do these spirits walk these halls? Did a tragedy happen twice in the bathroom of room 25? And if so, who were these women? I believe there's something about this room, but that's just my opinion. What's yours? Number two, the peculiar case of the Littlefield ghost. There's a ghost at the Littlefield house, allegedly that plays a ghostly tune on the piano at night, that paces endlessly back and forth in a dark attic upstairs. Locals say that she is Alice Littlefield. Alice was married to George Washington Littlefield, a Civil War veteran turned successful businessman, and amongst contemporaries, they had a happy marriage. The couple built the Littlefield house in 1893 for a staggering price of $50,000. During their stay at the house, the couple made several contributions to the University of Texas at Austin. One day, seemingly out of nowhere, Alice, age 65, began to have fears of Yankees wanting to kill her husband and kidnap her. Sometimes these delusions became so intense that rumors persist that she would spring for the stairs in order to attempt to evade the impending intruders. George Littlefield, ever did ever the devoted husband, hired three nurses to look after his beloved wife. This act of selfless love seems to do little for Alice's condition. Eight years later, however, Alice's Littlefield was back to being the loving aunt to her 12 nephews and 17 nieces, all 29 of which she paid for the college education, placed the nephews in businesses, and bought home for her nieces. Her condition had improved by the marker of her husband's death and the fear of him dying by a hand was no longer a reality. Despite the circulations of rumors that Alice Littlefield was agoraphobic and speculative, for the remainder of her life she visited and was visited by her extended family often. As one niece touchingly said, everyone in the family worshiped Aunt Alice. I couldn't have loved her more if she had been my own mother. However, she was rarely seen in the public eye for the rest of her life. Alice Payne Littlefield died on January 9, 1935 at the age of 88. She was set to rest in Austin's Oakwood Cemetery next to the love of her life, her husband. Etched on her tombstone, pointedly states it best, beloved wife of George Littlefield. Alice Littlefield donated her home to the University of Texas upon her death and is now used for school functions. In the attic of the Littlefield home, it is said that a time loop plays over and over again. Alice allegedly was locked away in the attic when her husband had to go out on errands. The hurried footsteps of someone running frightfully from impending danger are said to occur out of nowhere and as soon as it had occurred, it would stop. The rumor includes that she haunts the Littlefield dormitory as well. However, as always quickly added by those that have encountered her, that she is friendly, as in life and death, out to take care of others before herself. Guys, thank you again for visiting our channel. Please make sure to hit that like button if you haven't already subscribed. Until next time, my friends, take care.